In my early days of becoming a hunter, I was plagued with this monstrosity with two horns that they called a Diablos. But legends say that there was even a fiercer monster out there, bigger, more aggressive, and tankier, with only one horn called a Monoblos. It did not live up to its reputation, unfortunately. Welcome back, Classic Crew, to another journal in the For You journey as I try to slay every Fatalis in Monster Hunter For You. We are now on Journal 9. I am finally done with low rank for the most part. I have all the check marks. There's a blue one there, which makes me wonder how do I unlock those? What other little treasures and treats can we find in low rank? But I have finished the final monster I had access to that I could unlock in low rank, which was a Kirin of all things. Haven't seen that little pony in a while. And I've begun my journey into the high rank adventures of For You, which uh, is a whole different setting. So, you know, the low rank setting, it's all about let's journey across the world, searching far and wide for all of these, not Pokemon, monsters to hunt and villages to find. And now we're in Dunderma where it's all about let's hole up because it's going to get intense around here. Also, I just remembered a note that I need to make. Let me just put that there. I don't know if editor's going to include this. Well, I've uncovered, of course, Dunderma. I've discovered the town. I've un uncovered the desert map of Monster Hunter, which I've, I, I just associated sand with Monster Hunter for you. In general, I associate sand with Monster Hunter. I mean, it's there's a desert level in pretty much every game I think I've played. Monster Hunter Stories 2 leans heavily. There's a whole like desert area. It's in the movie, which I have not yet seen yet. And so, for and for you, just has so many like sand elements. You arrive into the game on a big sand ship and stuff. I'm kind of surprised I didn't encounter a sand level before this one. But so far, I like it. I like that there's dunes. I love hopping off the dunes onto monsters. I've also met my friend the crab, which I made a video about when I uh, met him in Sunbreak. I love this boy. Boy, he was a lot harder in this game. A lot harder. And then I came across an Emerald Kongalala, which we're going to talk about, but that was not in the Dune. There was a Cephadrome, which that thing is just garbage, garbage. And finally, the Monoblos, which I had heard so much about. So let's start off where we left off. Low rank, I was grinding through, getting my check marks, finally unlocked Kieran. And I remember Master Rank Kieran back in my early hunting days. So Kieran scares me. Not just because of the armor he gives you in those assless chaps, but the horse scares me. He's fast, he has thunder, so I'm like, okay, I'm on a 3DS, this is gonna be so hard. I go in, and I was so surprised to find how easy it was to dodge this thing and, and smack him. And then, you know, people reminded me, well, it is low rank. You know, there's two extra difficulties to this pony. I was like, oh, that's fair. Um, so I went in maybe overprepared mentally to fight this thing. And I was, you know, surprised that it wasn't as fast as I thought it would be. It was a lot more manageable. Most of its attacks I could dodge fairly comfortably. So Kieran was a fun fight. And I'm happy to have my pony back because I, it's tapping into my nostalgia, which is probably weird for a lot of you because Monster Hunter World probably was tapping into your old world nostalgia when they were introducing old monsters. But now I'm finding monsters that I, you know, the ones that I've only seen in Monster Hunter World, that's how I'm going into my nostalgia, which is all backwards, but it's fine. It feels the same, I'm sure. Uh, I also, I was on a trip not too long ago, and so I was actually grinding on the plane some new weaponry. And the closest one I could get was the Permanence, which was also the most expensive charge blade I could get. It's uh, the charge blade that is built from the Daren Moran uh, armor set. So I was grinding that on the plane. And I have to say, it was really fun and compact. I really love the 3DS for compact gameplay. And I uh, I got all the parts. In fact, I got a, a second gem. I don't know if they just drop easier on uh, Daren or if I just got really lucky. But I got another one of its gems or mantles, whatever it is. Built the super cool charge blade. My sharpness is now in the blue. What a difference it makes. And man, it really helped me with these high rank monsters because my fights were about 10 to 15 minutes for the most part, which was a lot more reasonable. I find when you start getting over the 20 minute mark, that's when the fights start feeling like... A stamina drain so um, yeah I'm happy with the weapon I have I have others to craft but I would need some help to craft them they require like Rathian Rathalos tails or like the the fin on the back of a of the Zamtrios all things that I struggle in breaking so I could use more help in grinding those out but we're in a high rank so you know maybe Although I could upgrade those weapons. But anyways, so Denderma calls and uh, yeah, so we grinded out some stuff. The Hermitor Crab, surprisingly difficult. I carded to the crab. I had a lot of fun with the crab in Sunbreak and I was expecting a similar fun here. But boy, this thing was hard. Now I was also fighting it, I think with a water, uh, water blade, which 
probably wasn't a good idea. I, I was just shocked because in Sunbreak, it's a master rank crab. Here it's a higher rank crab. It should be easier, but I was just getting maneuvered by this crab and I don't know what it was, but I really struggled. I was like, oh my goodness, is this what higher rank's going to be like all the way through? Because I still have G rank after this. This is going to be so ridiculous. Like maybe I really have to like work on my armor and stuff. And I was just starting to get all these negative thoughts. But then I was like, ah, oh, I just want to keep going. So uh, the next thing up was an emerald Kongalala. And I was like, well, the pink one was pretty damn it <laughs> um so then the next thing that unlocked was a cephadrome oh fun fact so i did need the emerald kongalala to fuel my balloon man in the air so that i could actually survey the desert and that's when the game actually tells you if you wave at the balloon it'll tell you where the monster is so i'm like okay the game does teach you this it's not just random folklore that the community knows so the cephadrome i've heard so much about the cephadrome i have ptsd of not the cephadrome, but the baby cephadromes, whatever those are called. From Monster Hunter 1, the liver quest, I tried doing that in my second Monster Hunter 1 stream. It was garbage. I didn't have cool drinks. I didn't have the, the Sonic or the Screamer pods, whatever. It was horrendous. And I've only heard bad things about the cephadrome. The community seems to hate it. So what I've gathered from this fight, uh, and I'm so glad I had the blue sharpness, otherwise I would have been bouncing like crazy. It's basically a Rathalos of the sand. So instead of being kind of this uh, not too exciting monster that's always in the air, it's a not too exciting monster that's always in the sand. And I was shocked to know to learn that this thing actually has ranged attacks. I did not think that there would be ranged attacks. So I was keeping my distance and all of a sudden this boy spits at me. I was like, oh great, of course. So it, it has like the, a bit of Plesioth and a bit of Rathalos. And if you just put that together, you get a Cephadrome. And it's not, it's not nice to look at. It's not nice to fight. I'm sure it doesn't smell nice. Could you imagine this thing? It, it's fishy. But it has been slain. I actually did not cart to this, surprisingly. It was not as bad as the community set it up to be, but it was not as fun in any kind of way. So I can only imagine it gets worse the further back you go in the generations. I'm not looking forward to fighting this thing in Monster Hunter 1. Then I went on a little crab hunt just to knock off another quest, which surprisingly took forever because I didn't know that the baby crabs hide in the sand. And the only way to get them out is you have to see where like the sand is like there, there's puffing coming out. And if you walk over it, then the crab comes out, then you can kill it, then you can finish the quest. So uh, hide and seek with the crab. I like that Monster Hunter has these little things that creates these little stories, but what a time suck that was, jeez. Uh, finally, the Monoblows. I've been looking forward to this for so long because the Monoblows I met in Monster Hunter Stories 2. For those who've been following this channel for a while in my journey, Diablos is a legend in my own story. And so Monoblos, which to me is like this elder, older, like brother to Diablos. That's just how I picture him. I was really curious to see what this boy was like. Really surprised to see how slow he was. I was started the hunt so like I feeling so powerful and just kind of going around this guy and I was like what is, what is, what is this I'm in high rank you know I just got destroyed by a crab but I'm running circles around a monoblows quite literally he was predictable I could hit him and then and then he hit me and I understood why this thing was scary with one hit I think he took out half my life and I was like oh okay he's a tank he's slower but he hits so hard and to be fair, my armor isn't upgraded, so it's, you know, it's not a proper reflection, but the other monsters in high rank so far have not hit as hard as a Monoblows. So I can only imagine as we get to the end game that the Monoblows becomes quite terrifying to fight because if he's this tanky at high rank, it's only gonna get worse. So otherwise, I like his move set because it is predictable. I'm not a big fan of it. He has, seems to have a lot of HP because it took a while to get this guy down. But I like big tanky monsters, and I cannot lie. So this one, is he better than Diablos? I have to hunt him a lot more times to really make that uh, decision. I welcome our Monoblos Lord into the Diablos you know, family, and I look forward to seeing what happens to him in G rank. So. Um, kind of neutral where I'm at right now. He's he, he At first he was coming across as kind of easy, but then he showed where his real strength is. You just screw up too many times and you are done. Like he does not forgive. Uh, so that was fun. And then with that quest, we unlocked the Master of Defense, who uh, is the next part of the story, I think. So the Master of Defense has arrived to Dunderma. He's there to b help build the whole defense. We also saw a Kushala, which is kind of being set up as potentially the next elder monster that I have to elder dragon that I have to uh, look out for like this 
This Kushal is weird. Creates a storm, shows up, basically says like, I'm here. What you gonna do about it? You're gonna build some defense? Good luck. And then he just leaves. And I was like, all right. Okay. I mean, I like when the game sets things up, but like, when does Steve show up? Because Steve was introduced in this game. I'm as I imagine he's maybe a G rank flagship. Uh, so curious to see where the story's gonna go here. And then I've got some songs that I've also unlocked, which is kind of a new mechanic. I did a quest for a cat or a palic, whatever it's called, uh, a feline. And that sparked his memory and he remembered a song. So I unlocked a new song for the stage. I love that idea. I didn't like the song per se, but if I can unlock more music in this game, I'm about that. I like the mechanic. I like all these like little mechanics that are very nice, complementary items to a really nice meal. What this feels like is like if I don't know if you've ever been to like a Korean restaurant, but when you go to a Korean restaurant, it doesn't matter what food you order as your like main dish, they're going to put like just nine different dishes in front of you just to snack on and try stuff. And then you've got like your main dish, whatever it is. And so this is what Monster Hunter is to me. I've got my main dish, which is my hunts, but then I've got all these like little side dishes that I can just like eat from. You know, I can do the, Meow the Meowster Hunters a little bit, or I can go fishing a little bit, or I can do some, some gather quests, or I can go on expeditions. I can find some poogies. Now I can unlock some, this just, or I can upgrade my kinti. I can do all these like little things. It's not that different. I mean, every Monster Hunter I feel does that but this one here it hits different somehow and i can't quite put my finger on it but i'm liking it so that's where i'm at early high rank still making my way through i think i really need to start grinding out uh, a high rank armor set i'm looking towards the um the blue drones oh, i forget the name escapes me right now what they're called either i do that or either i do uh the current armor i have in a high rank that would focus more on defense than attack so I'm not sure what I'll do yet, but I, I do need to upgrade my armor soon. My weapon feels comfortable, but my armor, it's I'm rolling the dice on that. So hopefully I see you on the next stream or on the next journal. And until next time, keep it classy.